My name is Goya. I live in a place called Arizona. And you know, my great-grandfather and his father and his father, they all lived in Arizona too. Of course, they didn't realize it at the time. They didn't even know that the place where their sheep and goats grazed was called Monument Valley. Can you imagine? They had never heard of the United States. For a long time, I thought everybody in the world lived in Monument Valley and raised sheep and goats like we do. For quite a while, I used to think all the people in the world were Indians like me. Then one day, a really special kind of day, while my dog Paco and I were watching the sheep, Tina and I saw a copper horse on the hill. And from that moment on, life in Monument Valley was never the same. My people tell great stories of how the world began, of where the spirits go and who made the stars and how a boy becomes a man. They speak of swift wild horses that thunder across skies of blue, and how maybe once in a lifetime a little boy's dream may come true. My grandmother used to tell me that a boy becomes a man when he can stand tall enough to touch the sky when he can follow the track of the shadows of eagles and ride fast enough to hang his hat on the wind. Those are man-sized jobs, all right. But nobody wants to be a boy forever. Hang your hat on the wind, little one. In your dreams to the sky. Ride so fast you can catch the sun. And someday, like the eagle, you shall fly. We didn't know it then, but the beautiful copper horse Tina and I had seen on the hill had broken away from a man who had been hauling him in a truck along the big road, many hills away. Some people in dew buggies tried to catch the horse for the man, but the horse was very fast. And whenever they expected the horse to go one way, he would go another way. The horse could turn quickly, but so could the dune buggies. And the horse could fly across the sagebrush like a jackrabbit. And so could the dune buggies. The horse knew that dune buggies couldn't leap across a rocky canyon like he could. And the people in the dune buggies knew it too. The man who drove the horse truck got Bob Davis to fly over the valley in his old crop duster airplane to look for the horse. And the Indian children in the village thought of the plane as a wonderful toy that was fun to watch. But some of the old people were suspicious. They figured it might be the work of the evil spirits. Now if I had intended for the human race to fly We'd have all been born with wings Somehow it don't seem natural to go swooping through the sky While riding on the kites without strings It's the work of the devil, we know that it's true He's bound to get his way by any means Trying to get to heaven, there ain't nothing he won't do like possessing them, possessing them flying machines Can this younger generation be so morally corrupt That they don't know wrong from right While they're up there flying upside down They don't know down from up And the way they carry on is a pride It's the work of the devil And those who will fly Will never ever mount to the hill of peace God made birds and angels as the only way to fly Never guessing we'd be messing with them flying machines And if he had intended for the human race to fly We'd have all been born with wings, wouldn't we? 
While the airplane and dune buggies were out looking for the horse in their own way, I too had joined the search. I had no idea the horse belonged to anyone, and as generations of my family have done since time began, I left my home to become the hunter. My people were born to be hunters, but a boy must prove that he can. He must follow the tracks of the shadows of eagles Before he becomes a man Before he becomes a man So I set out on the back of Joe, my mule. He's actually a donkey, but mule sounds better. There comes a time in the life of every man When everyone must know how tall he stands He must ride alone Blazing trails of his own He must catch the wind and hold it in his hand I found the horse all right, but trying to catch it was another matter. Joe was sure-footed, but he could never win a race, and this was a fast horse. I had mastered the skill of throwing the lasso, but I always threw the loop in the wrong place. Try to catch the wind and hold it in his hand Catch the wind and try to hold it in his hand I didn't realize this was a horse that had always been cared for or how little he knew about life in Arizona and Monument Valley. The splendor of green pastures was all the world he had known where water cold and clear and sweet clover hay were there in a stall all his own but now he was free as the night wind adrift in an ocean of sand where hunger and thirst were his master alone in a strange cruel land It wasn't long before the horse got hungry. He tried to eat sagebrush and it was bitter. He nibbled at the cactus and it hurt his mouth. Then he found some wild grasses and they tasted good. Soon he longed for a cool drink of water, and in the desert that could be a long way off if you don't look in the right places. As it happened, the horse wandered into an arroyo where the sound of a trickling stream was like the greeting of an old friend. Great spirits made the canyons to keep the waters cold And they made the winds that whisper All that glitters is not cold A pool of water was so cool and refreshing to a horse in the hot, dry desert that he drank and drank and stood in the deepest part and the mud felt good on his hooves until he realized that he was caught and the more he moved, the deeper he sank. He must have been there quite a while because by the time Joe and I found him, there were vultures circling about in the sky. He seemed awfully glad to see us and his eyes seemed to say, help me, and we did. I built a large pole tower of snarled scrub timber and I tied my lasso rope around the horse's neck across the tower. I tied the other end to Joe's saddle horn and together we pulled and tugged. The horse struggled against the mud that held him and then he was out. And for the first time in my life I felt like a man. I had tracked this great animal and captured him. I had saved the beautiful copper horse from the vultures and he was mine.
once in a lifetime a little boy's dream may come true A pretty rich lady came from the big city many mountains away and she paid Bob Davis to drive her around in his helicopter so they could look for my horse, which happened to be her horse, but I didn't know at the time. I remember seeing this strange metal bird fly over, and Tom Tom, that's what I named him. He got scared and I had to lead him into shelter so he couldn't see it. Helicopters are really funny things. They're like crop duster planes. They're not so funny to the old men in our village. While the people were still looking for Tom Tom, I was very busy trying to teach him how to be a good Indian pony. And that's really hard to learn if you happen to be a city horse, but Tom Tom worked hard and he was smart. I also learned quite a bit. My people might be Indians, but they've always been cowboys too. Komutayayo. He's an Indian cowboy Yes, sir See the boots and the two-gallon hat Hi-ho Take a look at his shiny raven head The neighbors all declare he's a cowboy What you think about that? Well, he rides on an Indian pony His nag is a thoroughbred like very few Well he rides into battle but never seems to know exactly where to go He's a cowboy He's an Indian too it wasn't long before we were ready for the big country and wide open spaces, and I could ride fast enough to hang my hat on the wind. Stay as long as you can, happy time. All too soon the day Will vanish like the wind How precious are the hours When love has found its home Welcome stranger Stay as long as you can your dreams away for a while mm -hmm. I will be your light your laughter and your tears when sunshine stays too long I'll be your rainy day welcome straight Stay as long as you can mm. Mm. Those were happy times. Tom Tom learned how to jump hurdles and work the sheep and goats. And we'd go exploring as far as we could see. Till one day. Father O'Flaherty from the mission came around and said the lady from California had lost her horse and that it looked a lot like Tom Tom. I thought about what my people have always believed. If the spirits hadn't meant for me to have Tom Tom, why did they send him to me? In stories that the old man tell of wondrous days gone by, a wild horse saved from the vulture is a gift from the spirits on high. If 
I hadn't rescued Tom Tom from the mud hole, he would have starved to death and then he would belong to the vultures and coyotes. But the Padre said the lady from California was worried about her horse and it wouldn't be right to let her worry. It was a sad decision to make, but I had to take Tom Tom to the mission, back to the lady from California. But then, from nowhere, some men in a truck with a trailer came and stole Tom Tom and drove away with him. I tried to stop them, but it was no use. So I ran to the mission and told Father O'Flaherty, and he called the Navajo police. And Bob Davis gave me a ride in his Crockester airplane. And Father O'Flaherty rode his motorbike. And the lady from California was in a shiny new car. And we all set out to catch the horse thieves who were planning to take Tom Tom across the border to sell him. Father O'Flaherty was a little slower than everybody else. The lady from California in a shiny car was really going fast, but not as fast as Joe, the Navajo policeman. Bob Davis and I were way up in the air and we could see for miles. All at once we saw the banditos and I pointed to the truck and trailer and Bob Davis brought the plane down for a closer look. Those were the horse thieves all right and they were really moving. We flew over them a couple of times, and then Bob Davis let him have it with his crop duster spray. We took another run at it and gave him some more. That slowed him down. By now, Joe of the Navajo police had caught up with him, and then the lady from California, and finally, Father O'Flaherty on his motorbike. And they surrendered, and the lady got Tom Tom back. I had grown to love the copper horse very much. And even though I was glad we got him back from the banditos, and I knew it was the right thing to do to give him back to the lady from California, it was a sad time for me when they loaded Tom Tom into the horse truck to take him away. I guess the rich lady from California knew how I felt because she told me she had a surprise for me. And it was the second best surprise I ever had in my life. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a handsome pinnacle with a real cowboy saddle. She said it was a reward for finding Tom Tom. Tina was happy too because she got to ride Joe now. And I don't think I ever saw anybody as pretty as a lady from California. Like the eagle, you shall fly. 